Good morning. Today, I'd like to return to those geodesic equations in polar coordinates that we talked about previously. We had figured out that r squared d theta d tau must be a constant. That means that d theta d tau must be that constant h divided by r squared. Substituting that back into the first equation, I find out that the relationship between r and tau must be given by this equation. To solve this, we're going to do this in two more steps. In the first step, I'm going to rewrite the equation with a new dependent variable. I'm going to let u equal 1 over r, so that r is 1 over u. We will rewrite this equation in terms of the u variable. Then secondly, we're going to change the independent variable to theta instead of tau by using this result in the chain rule. By doing this, we will write down an equation that relates u and theta, u again being a 1 over r, and the parameter, the proper time, will have been eliminated from the equations. Since r is 1 over u, the derivative of r with respect to tau is negative 1 over u squared du d tau. Differentiating again and using the product and chain rule, we find out that the second derivative of r with respect to tau is the negative of 1 over u squared, the second derivative of u with respect to tau, plus 2 over u cubed times the square of du d tau. A simplified version of this differential equation, then, is this equation. This is step one of two that we're going to have to do. The next step is to replace the independent variable tau by theta. So we're going to have to figure out what du d tau is in terms of theta and also the second derivative of u. Because d theta d tau is h over r squared, if I applied the chain rule, I found out that du d tau is the same as h over r squared du d theta. I'll take this expression and put it in here. Also, I need to know the second derivative. Using the chain rule again, and the fact that d theta d tau is h over r squared, that is to say h times u squared, the second derivative of u with respect to proper time turns out to be equal to this expressing everything in terms of u and theta, we end up with this awful looking thing, and then a miracle happens. This term and that term cancel each other out. So, after all of these substitutions, rearrangements, product rules, and chain rules, when the dust finally settles, the differential equation reduces to the second derivative of u with respect to theta plus u equals zero. And now another miracle happens. This is one of the few differential equations that you can write down a closed form solution for. So r as a function of theta is one over u, one over a cosine theta plus b sine theta. After all of this, I'm going to express this back in terms of Cartesian coordinates to make sure that we get what we think we should get. We already knew what the answer was going to have to be. ax plus by equals 1. These are equations of straight lines, which are the straightest pathways in a two-dimensional Euclidean plane. There is one interesting point to this. 
the origin x equals 0, y equals 0, is not on any of these lines. If you go back and look at the Christoffel symbols, the origin, one of the Christoffel symbols was 1 over r. If r was 0, that wouldn't make any sense. So polar coordinates in this description that we're using are not very good at the origin. This doesn't mean that anything weird happens. It just means the coordinate system isn't good at the origin. Except for that, though, we get straight lines. At first glance, it looks like I've just played this monstrous practical joke on you. We've become very sophisticated in some ways. We now know about non-constant coordinate bases and covariant derivatives and Christoffel symbols, and our big punchline so far is this is the straightest path in a plane. This is going to be one of our jumping off points, though. The reason I wanted to go through this calculation was twofold. One, to make sure I get what I ought to get, and number two, to show you the details of these substitutions. When we do this again in the future, I'll just have some music play quickly as the calculations are done. The next thing that we have to worry about is, what if I don't know Cartesian coordinates? What if I just have a coordinate system that somebody cooked up for me? They have expressed the metric tensor components in terms of those coordinates. Can I get my hands on the Christoffel symbols? If I can, then I can describe the straightest paths in that situation. That'll be up next. Until then, I hope everybody has a good day. I'll talk to you again soon.